Hey guys, welcome back to We Watched the Movie. I am Mike and I'm so friggin' jacked to the tits right now because we have another Halloween update, which these days, those are rarer than, I don't know, Blumhouse making a good film. By the way, imaginary spoiler-free review will be up later today. Good. God, that was awful. I thought Night Swim was bad. But anyways, yeah, look forward to that. Make sure you click subscribe so you get that as well. But here's what we're here to talk about today. Halloween, Michael Myers. Michael... King Myers is back in the news and I'm super jacked up. I just had, I just chugged a lot of coffee and this is great news. And I, look, I see some people being bummed about this. Like, oh my God, do we really need this? No, yes. Yes, we do, Steven. And I'm excited about it. So you shut up. You write it, Jamie. Write it or I'll break it off. So the head of worldwide television for Miramax was at a red carpet event for a TV series they're doing for The Gentleman, which was a movie that came back with, out with Matthew McConaughey a little while back. Jay and I reviewed it. Pretty good movie. Anyways, they're doing a Netflix TV series. He's at a red carpet event for him. They asked him about Halloween and he gave us the first update we've had in a little while saying, we're on a fast track. It's a big priority for us. We've had lots of exciting conversations in recent months with a number of really talented people. And I think we'll have a pretty good idea of what we're going to be doing very soon. Adding, we're hoping to lock down the creative team very soon. It notes here that they're still searching for the writer, but they have the idea for the TV series that they want. He says, it's a big world, and Hellwig said of the 13 movie franchise, the most recent trilogy culminating with Halloween ends, provided a fitting conclusion to the story, saying, so I don't think that it's an opportunity to go off the back of that. So it's going back to the origins. He says the foundation of it is the original film, the John Carpenter movie, the characters of that film, and perhaps a group of characters that we haven't really focused on much in recent film versions or even in a number of them. He said it's a creative reset completely and going back to the original film as opposed to spinning out of any more recent film adaptations. We're not going off anything to do with Halloween Ends. So that's fascinating in itself. That baby's... Put that baby to bed and put it away. My biggest idea for this entire TV series for the franchise has always been go back to the beginning, tell a new story. You don't have to do the exact same characters. Just start at the beginning. And then as you branch out, pick and choose the best things from the sequels that you like the most and leave them in and cut the fat out. And maybe it's, sometimes it ties into it, a kind of soul sister to the entire franchise. And you tell your own story with Michael Myers, but you do start at the beginning, but it's not technically a remake. Now, there's a lot to that, I know, but he did not use the words prequel because I know a lot of people are going to think, okay, we're going back to the original film. How are we going to tell that story all over again? Are we really going to dust out Laurie Strode's character again? I am 110,000% totally against that. We have done Laurie Strode to death. There is no reason to touch that anymore with a, with anything, whether it's uh, obviously it wouldn't be Jamie Lee Curtis starting from the beginning, but you just need to leave that character alone. That story has been told. And when I see people complaining, oh, another Halloween story, there's a lot of rich stuff to do with this character and the people surrounding Michael Myers as long as Michael Myers is the key focus to that but you cannot go back to Laurie Strode and do that same thing again you just can't and I don't think that they will Jim I think what we're going to do here notice that he said and perhaps a group of characters that we haven't really focused on that much in recent film versions or even in a number of them I think we're going to focus on Loomis I think that's what's going to happen. That's the best idea I can have for this. Obviously, you can go back. Who do we not focus on? Technically, Halloween Kills went back into the ancillary characters and just that just didn't have any juice to it, in my opinion. When we went back with the Tommies and, and Lindsay's and all that, like, it's nice. I get it. I love the, the, the reverence for the original film, of course, but it just didn't have the juice, man. Hey, you turn back on, you fucking light. But it just didn't have the juice, man. It didn't, it didn't work. It didn't have it. So I don't think it's a good idea to do that. I would, I think... In my mind's eye, I would love to see them focus on Loomis. And look, you can you can recast anybody. Obviously, no one's going to be Donald Pleasance. And maybe you don't even do that. Maybe you take that kind of character and you, and you do your own unique character with it. I don't know. But it smells like Loomis to me. And I just want to throw out, throw out Javier Bardem. Uh, I think that would be, a, am I saying that right even? I think I am. Uh, who was just in Dune 2. If you just look at him, he has that kind of crazy element to him. Like he could be kind of crazy, but he's also sort of smooth if he wants to be. I I think he would be a great Loomis. Uh, that or Jay's pick just as well for me. I think Ethan Hawke would absolutely crush as Dr. Fucking Loomis. I think that would be really fa fascinating to see. So I'm into both of those ideas. Obviously, let me know down below who you guys think would play a good Loomis for sure. But 
that's what it feels like to me. And by the way, I do want to let you guys know Monday night, we are going to hang out live 8 p.m. on Monday night. We're going to talk about all this because I want to know your all's opinions on it too. And we could all talk about it together. So again, click subscribe to the bell and all that crap so that you know when we go live, you get the notification. You don't forget. And we can all party together and we can hear your all's opinions on this. So we can go back and forth about it. That's the funnest part of this. But to get it out to talk about it, uh, we're making this video right now. So it's a creative reset completely and going back to the original film as opposed to spinning out of any of the more recent film adaptations. Now, specifically, he definitely means the Blumhouse ones. Is this him saying, we hear you fans, we're not going back and doing a follow-up to Halloween 4, we're not doing Danielle Harris, we're not doing the Call to Thorn, we're not doing any of that stuff. This could be him saying that, and it certainly sounds like it. Now, my biggest question, uh, and one of the biggest things about this is because as he's talking about this other show in here, and this kind of has gotten lost in the weeds of a lot of the stuff I'm seeing, as he's talking about this gentleman show, which is what he's there for, there's a lot of talk about budget and, and budget constraints. And his job is to take movie IP and turn it into TV IP. That's what he's there to do. And that's what he's doing with Halloween. But there's a lot of talk about budgets. There's a lot of talk about spinoffs into cinematic universes. He says that that's what they may do with the gentleman if the first season is successful. And obviously that's an idea here as well. Halloween, for those of you who are not happy about it being on the small screen, I'm just excited, man. I think it's gonna be really interesting to see. I'm looking at it through a bright lens and I'm saying this is more Halloween content, more Michael Myers content. It's doing something the series has never done before and I'm looking forward to it and I can't wait to see you know, on one hand, you could say, hey, Halloween's dead. Stop doing it over and over again. But on the other hand, you can't also say, oh, I never want to see it try to do something different. I mean, they're, they're trying to do something different. I'm not saying it's going to work out. I'm just saying I'm pumped as shit for it. I can't wait. It's very important that this succeeds in the first season. That's the big thing. It's bad for the franchise if it doesn't work because then you've gone to TV and the interest wasn't there for whatever reason. And then the franchise is in deep duty. So you really have to pull this off. The best place for this to go is Netflix. Obviously, I know there's a danger with Netflix because they cancel shows far too early or whatever, but if it goes to stars, it's dead in the fucking water. Evil Dead, Heels, some of the best content that's gone to stars has just not fucking survived. And it's the last place I wanted to go. So where does this go? The great news here is that The Gentleman's on Netflix. Mark Hellwig clearly has a good relationship with Netflix. There's another show they talk about in this article where he's working with Netflix on that show as well. There's clearly a relationship there. There's clearly an open door communication between the two of them. And I think Netflix would be a major suitor in this. And the best part about Netflix is it has a chance to go fucking crazy on Netflix. Like when you look at the zeitgeist of the world and like movies and shit like that, the stuff that really goes big seems to always be on Netflix. And I think if, if this goes to Netflix, it's going to get that viral attention. It's going to go crazy. It's going to have its best best chance to survive. And then by the way, you know what? If Netflix says, hey, we don't want to pay for this anymore. We're going to do something stupid, like shut the door on this and do a bunch of other dumbass projects. Then you go, hey, guess what? We know the interest is still there. Right back to the movies. Or you can go back and forth between all in and around all good things. I think this is very exciting news. If this goes to Netflix, it's got a big chance to survive and be great. Not a whole fan of going back to the original again when there's so many things to spread out and do, but I'm not gonna poo-poo it just yet because as he said, some characters that maybe we haven't focused on in a real long time. My biggest hopes are no Lori and a, at least a character like Loomis. I'm all down for an original story with all new characters. It doesn't sound like that's gonna happen, but the whole world is open to us. It's a whole new world. Anything can happen. Thor, why are you walking into my shot? You are such a whore for attention. Do you know that? Do you not get enough attention? Hey, look at me when I'm talking to you. I love you. I'm sorry. I raised my voice and it's going to be okay. Thor believes and so should you. We'll see you guys Monday night. How do you guys feel about all this stuff? Stay tuned as well for the imaginary review. That one, dad's going to yell. I'm going to yell a lot. Okay. We love your fucking faces. I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you soon. There's Halloween coming. Here comes that white faced fucker. An asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit. Wants to stab your sister's tits cause he's a white faced fucker. Loomis can't recover. Dr. Challenge drunk again. Sleeping with your sister's friends. Do you want to know about the darkness? I said, God damn. God damn you, fucker. Halloween never ends, suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box, but suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah.
So let's go trick or treating. Let's go fucking drinking. Let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS.